You know, one of the great scenes from The Simpsons, and when I say The Simpsons, I'm talking about the classic animated TV show from 20 years ago and not the galvanized corpse that's been walking around for the last generation now, I guess. But back in the golden days, there was an episode where they're having a uh, film festival, and uh, Mr. Burns um, provided an entry, and after the film was over, everybody booed the entry, and Burns turned to Smithers and said, uh, are they booing or are they saying Boo Earns. Oh, they're saying Boo Earns, sir. Oh, Boo Earns, Boo Earns. That's the first thing I could think of because what happened on October 2nd was uh, monumental. The, it's always the little things. It's always the things that seem so relatively trivial that to me have the most impact. Because as I said, back on October 2nd, there was a uh, NASCAR race in Talladega, Alabama. And... Uh, NBC reporter Kelly Stavis was recording that and interviewing the lead driver who was uh, Brandon Brown. And a number of fans in the background started a uh, chant. Now, I'm going to play the chant for you. I'm going to beep out the obscenity, and I'm going to let it just roll from there. Oh, my, it's just such an unbelievable moment. Brandon, you also told me to hear the chants from the, the crowd. Let's go, Brandon. Brandon, oh, you right. told me you were going to kind of hang back those f stages and just watch and learn what f learn that helped you there in those closing laps. Were those fans shouting boo? No, no, no they were shouting boo -ins. Let's go, Brandon has become an absolute phenomenon in the space of just a few days, and it's become a phenomenon for a couple of really important reasons. First of all, it's about as blatant as an example of gaslighting as we can possibly find. Now, for those of you not familiar with the term, gaslighting is uh, based on a movie from the 40s with Ingrid Bergman called Gaslight. And in that movie, a number of people who are determined to get to a treasure that's in the house that she owns have decided to drive her crazy and have her put in an insane asylum. A bunch of unseen Confederates basically make her believe that she's going crazy. There's a sound of dishes dropping. She says, did you hear that? And so, no, I didn't hear anything. So gaslighting is the process by which you convince people that they're fully insane by telling them everywhere through social proof that the things that they saw with their own eyes didn't really happen. And when you get enough of this, you start to get into that effect where the social proof overwhelms what your own eyes are telling you and you really begin to think you're crazy. The uh, Ash Conformity experiment that I talked about a couple weeks ago takes over. But sometimes... Sometimes the gaslight explodes. What I mean by that is the amount of lie that you're trying to push through these pipes is just more than the system can handle, and it just explodes. Kelly was the person who put a crack in this enormous pressure that had been building up for months, months and months, almost a year. The people's frustration with the Biden presidency, the people's frustration with all of these mandates, the frustration with all of the wokeness that he's instituting, the frustration with how he particularly came to office and all the rest, had just been constantly building and building and building. And here's the problem that Kelly solved for us. Conservatives are generally speaking civil people, and cursing does not generally appeal to us. There's a number of people out there, you're probably one of them, who many times may not have put it in this exact sentence, but we're certainly experiencing the emotions of let's go Brandon. And you've probably been feeling let's go Brandon for quite a long time. And what Kelly did was she gave conservatives a way to swear without swearing. But she did something even more important by showing the degree to which the media will go to gaslight us all into thinking, no, everybody loves this president. She created something that was so blatant, so over-the-top obvious, so, so ridiculous, so pathetic, and so desperate. That's, the, that's the, the feeling I'm looking for. The desperation of it, the cold sweat of it. She had to jump in there like Candy Crowley did and, and do her job as a mainstream media reporter, which is to lie to the American people and convince us that what we're seeing with our own ears in this particular case wasn't really happening. No, that's not what they were shouting at all. They were saying, let's go, Brandon. So she not only gave us a chance to swear, she also gave us a complete meme. And when I say a meme, I don't mean just the 
the picture with the with the text on it. Mimetic warfare is the warfare of ideas. That's where the word meme comes from. And so what she did was she gave us an encapsulated <laughs> oh well, I almost said Gestalt, but then if I'd said Gestalt, then I'd have to go and pound myself into a pulp out in the parking garage when it's over, because that's kind of a kind of an intellectual way of sounding important. But she gave us a, a, a completely wrapped up little box of expression. And best of all, she turned what could be perceived as kind of angry and and you know, kind of the, the box that they constantly try to put Trump supporters into, enraged white people who are just so simply filled with, okay, okay, blah, 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 blah. No, she took that sting out of it and replaced it with something much more effective, and that is ridicule. Ridicule. And that's why the entire conservative world has taken to let's go, Brandon, with the, with the passion that we have, because it is one of those flukes of nature, lightning in a bottle, just a chance cosmic ray that just hit right at exactly the right time, that allows all of us to not only express our um, displeasure and dissatisfaction and frustration with the um, Brandon uh, administration, see what I did there, but also to openly mock the media for their for their absurd, utterly, utterly, utterly transparent motivation and total, total disregard for the actual truth so long as it fits the narrative. It was, it was a once-in-a-lifetime thing. It really was. She had done what Mark Twain had always told us, not warned us, told us, advised us, and that is that tyranny and authority can handle criticism and they can handle pushback, but the one thing that authoritarians cannot handle at all, psychologically, is ridicule. Ridicule, they do not have the self-confidence to deal with. They can shout back and try to suppress us, and they're doing a really good job at all of that. But against the laughter, nothing can stand. And this is the gift that, that, that Kelly has, has given us. She's given us, in one sentence, three words, the chance to say, number one, we don't believe in this administration, and we never did. Number two, this administration is destroying this country and everybody knows it. Number three, your ability as a mainstream news media person to try to paper this over and convince us that this isn't happening has now reached such absurd proportions that the gaslight just exploded. But when you get right down to it, I think that the main thing driving this phenomenon is not pushback against Biden. It's pushback against censorship. That's what's driving the let's go, Brandon. It is a pushback against censorship. In a world now where any comments that are derogatory to Democratic politicians are pulled off of Facebook, anything critical of any of the Democratic policies are taken down from YouTube, once you came up with the let's go, Brandon, there's a kind of a glee involved from people who have been watching as their opinions have been annihilated over the course of the last several years in order to advance this agenda. There's a, a real kind of a mischievous sort of a bliss in being able to say words to the effect of, what, I just said, let's go, Brendan. Where's the, where's the problem here? Because ultimately, we are now as a, as a society going through what Soviets went through, and I have no doubt the Chinese and the Cubans, I know for sure the Cubans, and a bunch of other repressed societies are going through. In face of open censorship, suppression, and intimidation, we're finding code words in order to speak our mind. I'm not proud that this is happening here, but I understand the dynamic now. Okay, so Joe Biden's just a tremendous guy. Couldn't, couldn't possibly have anything bad to say about a man like that. Let's go, Brandon.